What is your small town dark secret story? This was around 15 years ago, but there was a sheriff's deputy that was seemingly a really cool guy. Friendly, cracked a lot of great jokes, etc. He was working at the local high school as a school resource officer and was apparently almost universally well regarded. Well, it turns out that he repeatedly forced a 14-year-old. He told the boy that he'd kill his parents if he reported the officer. I don't remember all the details, but I believe this went on for weeks or months before it was found out and the officer was arrested and eventually went to prison. Fifteen years ago, the local district attorney called his longtime girlfriend and told her he was taking the day off from work and that he loved her. He parked his car in town and went for a stroll past the local shops. He hasn't been seen since. His car was found where he had parked it the next day, he had left his cell phone in the car, but his keys and wallet were missing. Later that year, his laptop, sans its hard drive, was found under a bridge at a nearby river. The hard drive was eventually discovered by a local woman walking along the bank of the river, but it was too damaged to recover any data from. Interestingly, investigators discovered that someone had done a search on his home computer for how to wreck a hard drive. Did he jump from a local bridge? Did he encounter someone whom he had prosecuted who did him harm, or did he escape his life to start a new one? This is a sad one to me. There was an older couple here who ran a halfway house for troubled kids who'd recently gotten out of juvie, they fostered a few as well. They were loved in the community, wonderful people. One of them had an elder brother who was a gangbanger in the nearest big city. During a visit, he snuck his 15-year-old younger bro a handgun. Younger bro ended up holding up a local gas station and killed three people. One of them was my friend's cousin. The foster parents lost whatever credentials they needed to do what they did, the kids went back into the system, and the giant house has been abandoned since around 2009. About 10 years ago a lot of homeless people disappeared and when the police did the investigation they found out a guy was kidnapping and eating those people. Police found his hideout and found a half-eaten body and bones from another person. People don't like to talk about it but everyone knows what happened. About 30 years ago a local 8-year-old girl went missing during the annual carnival downtown. After a few days they found a suspect that was seen near the girl right before she went missing. The guy confessed to her horrific murder, force and torture. He was the kid's next-door neighbor and friend to the kid's dad. He was convicted and sentenced to 40 years or so. After eight years he was paroled and returned to the same house with his parents, right next door to the family of the girl and former friend. About a week later the man never showed up at his parole office. His parents filed a missing persons report. Rumor has it that several friends of the victim's father took care of him. If you talk to them they just say that they are sure that he won't be back. There's a half-submerged submarine from the war in the bay where I live. You can walk out to it in the high tide. In the late 80s somebody cut open the hatch, one of the only visible parts left sticking out the sand, climbed in at was having a look around. The tide came in and he drowned. If I remember rightly the whole hatch was filled with cement, then welded shut to stop it happening again. Back in the 80s a couple were driving a motorcycle when they were stopped by three men, who then abused the woman while forcing her husband to watch, then they killed both. The police caught them not so long after. The same night that they were caught, a mob of 300-plus people gathered in front of the police department, broke in and told the sheriff you guys did an excellent job, now leave it to us. The mob broke the cell where the three men were, beat them up and attached them, alive, into cars and dragged them for four miles until a park in the middle of the city, where they set them on fire, alive, while everybody was clapping and cheering. Almost nobody talks about it now, but there's even videos of it. There was a woman who was cheating on her husband and got pregnant with him. When she has the child it was quite clearly not the husband's child, so he kicked her out of the house. The woman broke down and went out drinking, then when she was about to return to her husband she picked her baby up, dropped it down a rubbish chute and left it there. The next morning she remembered what she did and went back to find the baby but of course only people with access to the chute can go inside so she had to wait hours possibly days for someone to unlock it and go inside. The baby was long dead by then. The woman killed herself shortly after. This developed into a ghost story later. People say you can hear the baby crying from inside the rubbish chute, and you can hear the woman crying on one of the stairways. I've got two, we have a prison for young delinquents in our town. 
Back in the 80s a student escaped and broke into an elderly couple's home. He strangled and abused the wife in front of her wheelchair-bound husband. He then beat the old man, but I don't know if he died or not. In the 80s a son of an NYPD detective stabbed a mid-twenties woman to death in her driveway over 40 times. There was a huge manhunt for the guy. My parents tell me the rumor was the woman's husband was gay and having an affair with the man. But there is also a rumor that the man killed his own wife and the guy that was convicted was an easy target based on his mental capacity and reputation. I actually met the guy over the summer during an investigation I was doing. The guy was definitely strange but he was in prison for 20 years. We have a vineyard hill next to our village, on that hill there's a big wooden cross, lots of people go there to drink, have a walk or with their dogs, but almost nobody knows why the cross is here. During war, a vineyard keeper lived there with his son. His son was recruited and the man was left alone. When war ended, his son survived and wanted to prank his dad by sneaking on him at night. But vineyard keeper saw him and thought he was a robber, so he grabbed his rifle and shot the robber, when he found out it was his son, it broke his heart. He dug a grave on top of the hill for his son and erected a big wooden cross next to the grave. When he was done, he laid next to his son and shot himself. From that day, no one worked on the vineyards and there's a big wooden cross on top of the hill. Now, you can't even recognize there's a grave. A well-known and well-loved public service figure was shot in the head by his stepson. His young daughters saw the entire thing and one had to reach into their dead father's pocket to get a phone and call 911. The stepson was arrested and has been in jail for over 20 years. One of the girls recently started a petition to free her stepbrother from prison. He was acting in self-defense. Their father had been sexually abusing all of them for years and the stepbrother took the fall to keep his stepsisters safe. Her post about it was so shocking. We all thought that he had been murdered over money or something, but she revealed so much. She said that he'd cycle through all of the kids. They dreaded hearing their father's footsteps outside of their door because they knew it was their turn that night. There's a lot more to it, obviously, but it's horrific. Her recollection and plea to free her stepbrother went into so much detail. Some decades ago, one of the teachers of our elementary school was a pedophile, and would regularly take a pupil with him up to his lodge, where he did stuff. The people that were harmed are now in their 40s, and either need lots of therapy, damaged beyond the point where therapy can bring them back, or dead. The IT guy at my high school becomes stepdad to two girls a couple years older than me who also attended the school. About a year into him being with their mother they found hidden cameras all in the house including the bathroom, shower and all the bedrooms the girl's mother found his laptop with literally 100s of videos of her daughter showering, getting changed etc on it. He is now in prison. In my town we have a story that we like to tell over the campfire but I soon found out that it was real. In the 1850s the richest family in town were the Jessops who were slave owners. The owner's daughter, Annie, who was white, fell in love with one of the slaves named Dominic. They eventually started meeting in secret by the riverbank on the plantation property at night, and one of them would light a candle to signal that they were waiting for the other. One night while a storm was raging and the tide on the river was high, Annie was trying to light a candle and meet Dominic but after lighting the candle, she slipped and fell into the river, drowning. Dominic went to the river and saw the light. When he went to meet Annie he saw her corpse caught up against some rocks. Something in Dominic snapped like a cheap lock that night. Afterward, he silently went to the shed on the property and hung himself. I thought it was just a story until I saw Annie's grave. Two different girls in my town disappeared ten years apart. The secret is that everyone knew who had done it. It was the original girl's ex-boyfriend and he bragged and confessed to his friends and acquaintances for ten years that he had murdered her. He was never arrested because of most of the people he told didn't want to go to the police because of drug usage and the police felt like they never had enough evidence. So the second girl starts seeing him, and even tells her friends that she doesn't think he's dangerous like everyone says, and disappears and he's still out there bragging. They find the second girl's car burned out in the woods and he has burns on his hands. No one does anything because there's no bodies. Then a mushroom hunter stumbles on the two corpses deep in the woods buried in shallow graves side by side. The guy finally got arrested, but last I heard the police bungled the investigation again and a bunch of evidence was thrown out. So far he hasn't had a trial because he was declared unfit. Thanks for tuning in to Reddit Streams. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for more videos. Share your views in the comments below.